All right. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the session. Uh, my name is Mohak Chada. Today I will talk, be talking about Fedless, uh, secure and scalable serverless federated learning. Uh, a bit about me. I'm finally a PhD candidate at the Chair of Computer Architecture and Power Systems at the Technical University of Munich. I'm working mostly on solving various challenges in the domain of serverless computing and have experience in the domains of cloud computing, high performance computing, parallel computing, and systems for ML. So uh, this presentation uh, is structured as follows. Uh, first, I will give a brief introduction about serverless computing and federated learning, followed by why this makes sense. Uh, then introduce Fedless and how Fedless addresses the uh, straggler problem in federated learning, some uh, experimental results which we did with the system, and finally, uh, what we are currently working on. All right, so if you look at a brief history of the cloud, uh, the x-axis denotes uh, focus on application or business logic, and the y-axis denotes the virtualization stack abstraction. So uh, in the beginning, uh, there was traditional IT, where the unit of scale was physical servers, with the deployment model being bare metal servers. Uh, these usually uh, lasted for years and could be deployed in hours or days. Uh, with the introduction of virtualization, uh, VMs became the unit of scale and the deployment model as uh, infrastructure as a service. Uh, VMs get, get deployed in minutes and live for weeks. Uh, further, uh, with uh, the introduction of OS level virtualization, containers became the unit of scale and the deployment model as a uh, platform as a service. Uh, containers can be deployed in seconds and live for hours or minutes. Uh, so all these uh, different deployment models are essentially server-based, uh, but what I mean by that is that the user or the application developer has to configure certain backend server configuration parameters. So uh, with the introduction of AWS Lambda in 2014, uh, uh, this new concept of function as service was uh, introduced. So here, uh, the infrastructure management is completely handled uh, by the cloud service provider, and the application is essentially decomposed into fine-grained functions. And these functions became the unit of scale, and they can be deployed in milliseconds and essentially uh, live for seconds. So uh, some prominent examples of serverless computing platforms today uh, are uh, commercial offerings such as AWS Lambda, Google Cloud Functions, uh, Azure Functions, uh, IBM Cloud Functions, uh, open source alternatives such as uh, OpenWhisk, uh, OpenFast, and uh, Knative, right? So how do these platforms actually work? So uh, function as service uh, is an event-driven paradigm uh, where functions are invoked uh, on events such as uh, HTTP requests or gRPC requests, right? So uh, on the occurrence of these events, uh, the function as service platform uh, is responsible for providing resources to these functions and its isolation in ephemeral uh, stateless containers called uh, function instances. So on, the, on, on function invocation, uh, if uh, the serverless computing platform first checks uh, if a uh, function, ex function instance exists or not. So if it does not exist, uh, the, uh, the serverless computing platform creates a new uh, function instance. Uh, this process is essentially what is called a cold start. And uh, this uh, created uh, function instance processes the event and then uh, returns the response uh, to the user. So the function as service platform or the serverless computing platform can create concurrent function instances uh, to handle multiple events or requests on demand. Uh, when the number of requests decreases, uh, the fast platform can automatically scale, scale down the number of active function instances to zero. So uh, to more better understand what the cold start process is, so you, essentially what happens when you have an event, you download the code, you start a new instance, and then bootstrap the function runtime, uh, and then execute the function handle, right? So this whole process until bootstrapping the runtime is what is called a cold start. And if there's an already an active function instance uh, which can handle the event, then uh, only the handler method is executed. That is what is called a warm start, right? So uh, this part is essentially what is uh, responsibility of the platform to optimize. All right, so uh, moving on to uh, federated learning. Uh, so what is this? Uh, it is essentially a distributed uh, learning paradigm that enables the collaborative 
learning of ML models among a group of participants or devices or clients without sharing the data. So uh, in contrast to traditional cloud-centric uh, approach for deep learning, uh, which requires uh, training data to be collected and processed at a central server, uh, in federated learning, the data never leaves the devices. Uh, instead, the participants only exchange uh, updated model parameters. So it tries to solve the fundamental privacy problems in uh, distributed learning. So how does it work? So an FL system uh, has two main components, a central server uh, and, a, and participating clients. The central server uh, is responsible for coordinating the training process and contains the latest global model. Uh, the traditional FL training is done in synchronous rounds, and in each round, a subset of clients participate in the training. So at the start of a round, uh, the central server sends the latest global model to a subset of devices uh, to train and wait for the responses from those clients or for a pre-configured uh, timeout. So when these uh, devices receive the global model, they start training locally. After they finish, uh, they push their updates back to the central server. Uh, upon uh, receiving the updates or when a timeout occurs, the server constructs uh, a new global model by aggregating the updates uh, from the clients. So this process is repeated until the desired accuracy is reached. So clients and federated learning can be mobile devices, edge devices, institutions operating their own data centers, or virtual machines uh, managed by infrastructure service providers. So based on the scale of federation, uh, FL can be divided into two categories. So one is cross-device, uh, where the participating clients are mostly mobile and edge devices with limited compute capabilities. And another one is cross-silo, uh, where, where clients are essentially organizations with uh, suffi sufficient compute capabilities. So uh, why uh, bring serverless computing uh, to federated learning? Does it make sense? So if you look at different challenges in FL, uh, right. Uh, so since FL is traditionally a synchronous process, it turns out that uh, clients that finish with their training uh, often spend a lot of time waiting for others to finish until a new round begins. So this leads to unnecessary cost or wastage of resources. Uh, most clients have heterogeneous hardware. Uh, this often leads to uh, resource over-provisioning and cumbersome infrastructure management for the data holders. Uh, scalability, so at the end of each round, lots of clients report back their results at the same time suddenly. So FAST, on the other hand, uh, fundamentally aims to solve many of these problems. So it provides rapid scalability uh, during request births, automatic, automatic scaling to zero when resources are unused, an attractive pricing and development model, and finally, uh, ease of use, right? So, Introducing Fedless, uh, so it is a research project uh, bootstrapped by me and one of my colleagues at TUM uh, at the end of uh, 2021. So what is it? Uh, it's basically a system and framework for federated learning on a heterogeneous fabric of functional service platform. What it means is that it can simultaneously work with clients in the cloud, edge devices, or on on-premise data centers. Uh, it provides essential features for security. Uh, it supports uh, uh, training using differential privacy, uh, has a modular design and can be easily extended. Uh, it currently supports uh, seven functional service platforms out of the box, uh, supports multiple FL training strategies such as Fed Average, Fed Prox, Scaffold, uh, supports uh, training of arbitrary DNN models using TensorFlow, and uh, offers various performance optimizations uh, to fix the shortcoming of serverless functions. Right. So let's look at the system architecture of Fedless. So this, it can be grouped into several components. Uh, clients are essentially serverless functions uh, which get their data from an S3 bucket or a mountain network drive. Uh, the controller is a stateful process uh, responsible for uh, managing and monitoring the entire training lifecycle. Uh, it includes the strategy manager uh, and a mocking system uh, to simulate the platform as a whole on a single machine. So for debugging, clients and aggregator processes uh, can run on a single machine uh, without the need to deploy uh, the clients on actual fast platforms. So the developer only needs to specify the mock flag while running the controller, and the rest is handled internal, internally by the mock invoker. Right. So the parameter server uh, is MongoDB, which we chose because of its reliability, replication support, and creation of RBAC rules and the aggregator functions are responsible for 
uh, updating the model weights and computing uh, the accuracy of the train models. So the security features of Fedless can be divided into four aspects, uh, function ownership, uh, authentication and authorization, uh, parameter server access, and uh, general security features. So uh, data holders are responsible uh, for their own functions. Uh, so this enables uh, complete trust through uh, full control and flexibility. Uh, all participants and requests are authenticated. So only the trusted server uh, can invoke uh, client functions and only identified and approved functions can join the heterogeneous fabric. And we support custom identity providers such as SAML 2.0 and OR 2.0. Uh, so the mechanism uh, for this should be uh, cloud agnostic, uh, agnostic to any fast platform and should require uh, no manual intervention. So for this, uh, we make use of uh, AWS Cognito, uh, which essentially uses uh, JSON uh, web tokens. So basically all requests to clients contain tokens signed by Cognito, and then clients can easily check if the token was actually signed by the Cognito user pool and sent by the FL server. We follow best practices for security and counter most of the vulnerabilities listed uh, by the open web application uh, system project with our system design, for example, isolating authentic authentication authorization by using uh, separate functions. So uh, a major problem in FL is privacy. Uh, so the, the main idea is that the model parameters can leak information about the training data. So there are essentially two types of attacks, which are called as membership inference attacks and mod model inversion attacks. So there are different ways to prevent this. Uh, for example, encrypting the model parameters uh, using techniques such as uh, secure multi-party computing or homomorphic encryption uh, using differential privacy. Uh, but in most cases, a uh, hybrid approach is often used. So encryption uh, is problematic for fast because of huge computational overhead and complex uh, interfunction communication. Uh, DP, uh, on the other hand, is well suited, uh, where the clients can just add noise to their parameters before uploading them onto the parameter server. So Fedless, by default, implements local differential privacy, uh, which is a form of record level privacy in which the client functions add Gaussian noise to the parameters before uploading them to the parameter server. Right, uh, so the core base uh, of our system is entirely written in Python 3 with support for TensorFlow 2 Plus and Keras. Uh, so it also incorporates some inbuilt performance optimization such as uh, streaming aggregation, so which eventually performs uh, a running average aggregation of the updated client model parameters uh, so that the aggregator does not have to load all the uh, model updates in memory at a single point. Uh, we also have this LRU cache uh, for the noble global namespace due to the ephemeral uh, stateless nature of the fast functions. And we also implemented federated evaluation, which enables uh, like client-side evaluation of global models so that you get better fair accuracy results. So uh, addressing one of the bigger problems in uh, federated learning, which is stragglers, which are essentially uh, slow clients. So, uh, Stragglers can occur due to uh, various reasons in federated learning. So, for example, one of the reasons can be uh, system heterogeneity, and some clients can have low compute resources. Uh, and since federate in FL, uh, most clients have non-independent and uh, non-identical data distributions. Uh, some clients can have more data samples as compared to the other, uh, right? So this, this can lead to statistical heterogeneity. Uh, there can be networking issues or complete failures. Uh, they can also be uh, cold starts. So if we look at this effect uh, in practice, uh, we see that this is the traditional uh, FL training strategy called Fed Average. So when we increase the number of stragglers in the system, uh, uh, we observe that uh, it takes more time uh, to train the model as well as the accuracy of the final global model actually uh, is significantly less as compared to a scenario when there are no stragglers uh, in the system. So how do we account for that? So uh, we developed and integrated uh, a strategy called as Fedless Scan into Fedless. Uh, so Fedless Scan is a semi-asynchronous clustering-based strategy uh, specifically tailored for serverless ferrated learning and can dynamically adapt uh, to the client's behavior at very 
little to no communication cost. So it contains two parts. Uh, first is an intelligent client selection algorithm based on DB scan clustering. And the second is a staleness aware aggregation to asynchronously aggregate delayed client updates. So uh, our intelligent client selection uh, scheme contains a lot of features that distinguish it from other approaches. First, it is based on dbscan, which like, unlike other clustering approaches, does not need uh, the number of clusters to be determined before training. And if you look at the complexity, it's n log n, so n is the number of clients, uh, so it's, it's suitable for large scale uh, federated learning systems. And uh, we also consider failures and slow updates such that we group clients uh, with similar behavior together to minimize the effect on stragglers uh, on the rest of the clients. So how does it work? So our strategy partitions clients into three tiers, uh, rookies, uh, participants, and stragglers. So rookies are uh, clients which have not yet participated in the FL training process and for which no behavioral data exists. Uh, participants are a group of clients that can participate in the clustering process. Uh, stragglers are clients that have missed one or more consecutive training rounds. Uh, these clients have the lowest priority in a client selection process. So to better explain uh, selection strategy, assume that all clients are in a jar. Uh, this jar can be further divided into three jars based on the tiers we just mentioned. Uh, the rookies jar contains the clients which have never been called before. Uh, essentially, all clients are rookies in the beginning. The second jar contains uh, clients which participate in the clustering process, and the third jar contains the unreliable clients. So for client selections, jar jars are ordered by priority. The strategy for picking the clients from the three jars differs. We use random selection for rookies and stragglers, uh, while the second tier clients are selected based on clustering. So the priority aggregation function does the following. It takes clients from the first jar, then moves on to the next uh, if there are not sufficient number of clients available. Moreover, as the training progresses, uh, the clients can switch between the th different tiers. So after a few training rounds, the rookie's jar will be empty when all cl clients have been called at least once. Uh, we now have a few of them in the second and the third tier. During the training, we move clients between these two tiers uh, based on a cooldown variable. Uh, this is set to demote clients which fail uh, for a certain number of rounds to the third tier, and once it expires, they can move back uh, to the second tier. So how does clustering actually take place? So uh, for clustering, uh, from the second tier of clients, we collect uh, training times and missed round ratios. Uh, following this, we com compute a penalty factor called uh, missed round ratios. Th basically, this factor gives a higher penalty uh, to uh, clients which makes uh, miss recent rounds. So next we do uh, exponential moving average on both lists and get a single value uh, for tra training EMA and missed round EMA. So we automatically, we provide a way to automatically tune the parameters of DB scan to give the best clustering. And after we obtain the clusters, uh, we compute uh, total EMA uh, for each client by adding the training time and the penalty time. Uh, we then start the clusters and pick the clients closer to participate in the training process. And to accommodate for slow updates from some clients, we uh, provide a staleness aware aggregation scheme that includes past updates, uh, but with a dampening effect. Uh, the aggregation is triggered at the end of each round. Uh, so instead of finding only the most recent round results uh, in the parameter server, we fetch all updates newer uh, than a certain tunable parameter uh, called tau. Uh, following this, we aggregate the updates according to the shown equation. So how does, uh, the training workflow in Fedless look like, right? So, uh, so the FL admin uh, configures uh, the training process. Uh, the controller then uh, requests a new invocation token from the authentication server using the credential configured by the FL admin. Uh, then uh, it fetches uh, basically uh, the client behavior results from the Fedless database. So this depends on the training strategy. For example, if Fed average, uh, which does random selection of clients, this step will not be performed. Uh, then it invokes the uh, intelligently chosen uh, FL client during the round using the controller. Uh, in the next step, uh, the clients uh, contact uh, the authentication server to check, uh, uh, basically to validate the token. And on successful validation, uh, the clients fetch the latest global model uh, from uh, the parameter server and then compute uh, local model updates. 
So when the training is complete, the clients upload uh, the new local model to the parameter server, uh, and they also upload some uh, behavioral data which we need for this intelligent client selection process. So uh, at the end of the training round, the controller adjusts the participant's behavioral attributes uh, based on the strategies and then pushes them back to the Fellas database. Uh, afterwards, we invoke uh, the aggregation function, which combines the client's results into a new global model. And at the end of the round, uh, the controller invokes a subset of clients again uh, to essentially calculate the updated model accuracy. So this process essentially repeats uh, until uh, a configured accuracy is reached uh, on the global model uh, configured by the FL admin. So I would like to present some uh, experimental results uh, which we have performed uh, uh, using our system. So we have experimented with a wide variety of data sets, uh, right, uh, which are also available uh, in our repo and can be easily configured with our system. Uh, some of them are mentioned here, but we also support uh, many others. Uh, and other data sets can also be added and experimented with, right? So, but first, let's look at if this whole idea actually uh, makes sense, right? So uh, let's look at a fast-based system and a traditional infrastructure as a service-based system, right? So, so what we did was essentially we deployed 100 clients on the same hardware with same CPU capabilities, uh, one time using a traditional FL framework uh, called Flower, uh, using Docker and C groups, and uh, another time uh, using open fast functions. Uh, right, uh, so what we found out was that uh, our fast-based approach is actually a bit slower as compared to traditional uh, IES-based approach. So uh, this can, it's, this is essentially because of uh, overhead due to the function as a service platform itself and lots due to the pure nature of functions, right? Cold starts, no persistent storage, and also due to the parameter server communication. But if you look at cost, right, so we calculate costs uh, using the Google Cloud Functions uh, costing model, and we don't calculate point estimates, but we calculate uh, broader bounds. So for this in our calculations, we include how costs would change if the Fedless client functions took uh, two times or three times as long as the Flower clients, uh, and if the Flower clients only took like 0 0.5 times as long. So for all these experiments, we observed that the clients uh, fast was actually cheaper. However, when we increased the total number of active clients from the total number of clients in the federation, uh, fast becomes uh, less uh, cheap. So this is intuitive because uh, if you have better resource utilization in VMs, uh, the, mo um, the most co cost efficient they are as compared to serverless. However, uh, these results are really promising uh, since in federated learning there can be uh, millions of devices in a federation and with only a few hundred which are active uh, in each round. Right, so some results with our uh, straggler mitigation strategy, so these experiments were all performed on uh, Google Cloud Functions uh, for up to 200 concurrent clients uh, in each round. So we observed that our strategy achieves faster convergence as compared to uh, different strategies that we, in this case, do, Fed Prox and Fed Average. Uh, and on the right, we show the results for the Google Speech data set. Uh, so for the standard and the scenario with 70% stragglers, our strategy achieves faster convergence. And across all data sets, which we, I mentioned in the slide before, we actually achieved 2% uh, higher uh, end accuracy. Right, so <laughs> if you look at training times, right? So our strategy reduces total training time by 8% on average, and these values in the plot represent uh, average across all different flagless scenarios uh, for a particular data set. So we observe that our strategy is definitely uh, faster. And if you look at training costs, uh, our strategy actually leads to 20% uh, reduction uh, across all data sets and uh, scenarios. So uh, just to give a brief idea what we are currently doing uh, in this project. So uh, one of the most implicit assumptions uh, in current FL systems is that 
all FNIP clients must have a uniform ML model architecture uh, to train a global consensus model, right? But however, uh, this assumption uh, fails to address fundamental client level challenges in practical uh, FL systems. So, uh, for instance, uh, clients in FL can have significantly skewed uh, non IID data distributions, right? So as a result, in uh, extreme non-IID scenarios, uh, the uniform global model uh, may lead to poor generalization performance following the model aggregation process due to high variance uh, among the trained uh, client models. So in this case, uh, across the three model architectures, uh, we observed a 27.1% decrease, uh, average decrease uh, in the accuracy, right? For the case with uniform data distribution and non-IID. So uh, towards this, uh, we are looking into uh, KD techniques uh, to train heterogeneous personalized uh, client models. Uh, so knowledge distillation is a popular technique uh, used in ML uh, that fac facilitates the transfer of knowledge from a large uh, and complex model known as the uh, teacher model uh, to a smaller and more efficient model referred to as the student model. So. In this case, uh, you don't even need to exchange the model parameters or the weights, uh, but only the class logics, right, are exchanged between the clients and the central server. So uh, we actually have uh, integrated a popular federated uh, tech, uh, knowledge distillation technique called FedDF. So it's a server-side uh, knowledge distillation technique. Uh, more details about that uh, can be found uh, in by scanning the QR code and converted it into a completely uh, serverless architecture and integrated that into Fedless. And we have observed some promising results. Uh, for example, uh, so here alpha is essentially uh, like a Dirichlet distribution for controlling the skew of the class labels uh, in each client's data distributions, right? So alpha, a lower alpha value says that uh, there is a lot of uh, skew. So s some clients only have few class labels and also have a lot of unequal number of samples. So when going from 100 to 0 0.1, we observe that uh, the different model architectures, uh, which can be configured for each client, uh, there's not, not too much significant uh, drop in accuracy. Right, uh, so this we are also investigating further uh, for other data sets and other different model architectures. So in this case, the model architectures were simply uh, uh, s multiple different layers of CNN architecture. So two layer CNN, three layer CNN, uh, stuff like this. Right, uh, great. So more details about our work, what we're doing can also be find, found in these two papers. Uh, right, and mm, great. So thank you. Uh, uh, for attending this session today. Uh, if you have any questions, I would be happy to answer. Thank you. Uh, that was a very fascinating talk. Uh, and I had some questions. Uh, as I was watching it, but you covered a lot of it uh, throughout. Uh, one question that I still do have is, how do you uh, account for concept drift or distribution drift uh, across time? Uh, so I, I, you mean by like how the average gradients can uh, diverge? Yeah, or like uh, just the dis data distribution can diverge uh, across uh, the clients participating in uh, Yeah, so this. Uh, I, so it depends, depending upon the non id ness of the distribution across clients. So for what we have observed, uh, Fedless can converges quite well uh, for uh, even higher non-ID data, non-ID scenarios. Uh, but uh, in some cases where there's too much skew, uh, it doesn't converge that well. So in that case, we are looking at KD techniques, which they are more robust. So, but that's a really active research problem in FL. So uh, no one has a complete answer to that. It depends on the strategy, the aggregation scheme, and a lot of other factors, and what client architectures, model architectures you use. So uh, simple averaging techniques definitely diverge, right? So that's why I think uh, KD and personalizing client models, depending upon 
the data distribution of a particular client is the way to go. So personalized client models is the way to do it. Like training a global consensus model will not always work with extreme non-ID scenarios. Yeah, so that's why we are looking at client model personalization using uh, KD. Okay, that makes sense, thank you. Sorry for the delay, first of all. Uh, anyway, I, I saw about the, the results regarding the, the quality of the model itself. But what about the, the overhead in the training? I mean, when you need to share the weights all the time, I suppose that it, it impacts directly in the, in the training time. What about that? So that already is accounted for that. Yeah, I'm talking about the, the training phase and not just the, the results because in the, in the, the last slide you, you show the, your, the, the results in the, in the, in the quality, yeah? So uh, there was a plot with training time which already included this. Uh, sorry, sorry, I missed it. Yeah, sorry, thank you. Great then, thank you.